Now, of course, being the commissioner of such a large... Are you Victoria? Yes. In this your office? Yes. Right. Right, I'm being on Scarlet. And I solve problems. Oh, nice to meet you. Oh, boy, do I have a problem. I couldn't do me a favour, because you're on the way in, I smell coffee, I'd love that. Yes, sure, how'd you take it? Lots of sugar, lots of milk. May I? Of course. Right, about this problem. There's few things I need to know, like, who is the caller? Is he connected? Would the screen go up if we went missing? You know, a bit of background information that might be relevant. Well, I don't really know anything. I mean, I've got suspicions, but, you know, nothing's definite. I'm not sure. Listen, don't get me involved in crunching if you haven't got all the figures. That's what I'm saying. Look, I don't know anything, OK? Look, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just at the end of my tether, and you're so curt. Well, listen, I'm sorry if I'm curt with you, but in these situations, you need to act fast, think fast, move fast. And I need you to act fast with me, OK? OK. I could introduce you to some of the wrestlers. Listen, it's like a social gathering. I don't want to get my face out there, do I? What this needs is something different. This needs, let's say, a vulgar show of something. I could put you in the ring. Listen, it's been a long time since I've actually considered myself a legitimate fighter. But actually, maybe you've got a point. It's a bit like opening a nut with a sledgehammer, but as we don't know how many we're dealing with, and we don't know involved, perhaps a very, very big vulgar display of something like that might send the white right signals out there. Well, it's, it's your call. You're the expert. You... It's your decision. Right. OK, then. You make the arrangements, OK? Um, doesn't matter what I'm fighting, it really doesn't matter. Um, and I'll be in touch in a couple of weeks. <laughs> in their renegade Outlaw 3 TV. All they had to do was promise that Curve would work for a whole year without a pay to get yet another shot at the titles they lost a couple of months ago. The new breed are confident, they're looking good, they're in shape, and they, more than anything else, want those titles back. But the Castanos are no easy prey. Jorge and Alex are tough, they're Colombian tough. And as we see, Jorge has a new outfit, wearing his colours proud on his leg, the Colombian flag, flying high or flying low, showing that he means business as only a Colombian can. But let's talk about what we've just seen. Before the credits rolled, we saw Victoria de Montfort in our office. Lately, Victoria has been receiving a what set of threatening you? phone Sit calls. You have to wonder who could be behind this campaign of terror. Could it be Paul Travell? I think so. Could it be Mark Sloan? No way, ma'am. What about Doug Williams? Who would be? Whoever it is, she has gone to the ultimate recourse to try and find out who's behind it and solve that problem. She has hired the fixer, Dino Scala. He's a man who solves problems. And boy, does Victoria have one. Even if Doug Williams isn't behind this series of threatening, menacing phone calls, he's certainly got the FWA by the unmentionable. He's our champion, like it or not, and we'll see him in the second half defending his title against Johnny Storm.
let's get back to the, the match in hand. We see the Castanos on top as Jorge has driven, driven his breed opponent into the mat, putting all the pressure down on the net, causing pain, causing hurt. And yes, you can see it etched on the face as well as the tattoo is etched on the back of his partner, Ash is hurting. Jorge throwing Ash to the outside there, and if I know my Castanos, I know what's coming up now. Yes, yes, look, there's Alez taking it to Ash outside of the ring, going outside the rules. This isn't in the handbook of how to win a clean wrestling match. Instead, this is high impact. Oh my word, a gigantic acai moonsault. That, ladies and gentlemen, is when Alice Castano leaps onto the middle rope on the outside of the ring and does a full 365 degree turn into his opponent, knocking Ash to the ground, knocking all the wind out of him. Has he knocked the fight out of him? If he hadn't, that, nap break, that neck breaker from George Castano surely has done. Still no, a two count. There's still fight in the new breed yet. They may be young punks. They may interrupt my television show at every opportunity. But I don't like the Castanos. I'm backing the new breed here. Let's hope they can get business done. Another two count there. Alice Castano trying to put Ash away. Ash is isolated. He's a man alone. He's like a fat, greasy, 40-year-old spotty man without any hope of finding a girlfriend. Yes, that's how alone Ash is. But look at him. Like that fat, greasy, 40-year-old man, he's got a bit of fight. In the 40-year-old man's case, it may be protecting his Star Trek videos. But with Ash, it's coming back. It's trying to fight. It's trying to win this match. Win those belts back. But it's to no avail because the Castanos are on top again. And you know why? They cheat. Beautiful double underhook overhead suplex. Driving Ash down to the mat and a cover. Two, almost a three count. Two and three quarters cover. There by the Castano brother, by Jorge. Ash has got to be a, a broken man by now. And Jorge is really putting the pressure on with that sharpshooter. And grabbing the ropes for extra leverage. That's not on. Ladies and gentlemen, he is cheating. He is bending the rules so far. They're almost breaking. Curve getting in the face of junior referee Andrew Coyne there. He may be a junior referee, but he officiates his sub authority. Let me tell you, quick cover. Curve breaks it up. A boot to the back of Alice, but he's only earning the ire of the referee once more. Only ticking off the man who is supposed to be protecting him. Second row boot salt. Only a two count again. Ash desperately needs to make a tag. But how can he when Alice takes care of Curve as well as Ash in the ring? These Colombians have grown as a team. They may be brothers. They have an amazing sense of communication. But Ash! Ash has come back. Out of nowhere, there's a power bomb. And Jorge getting the boots in. The referee has not seen the tag. He's going to force Jorge out of the ring, surely. Andrew Coyne, get a grip. A fight back by Ash. He's showing some spirit here. Maybe I will like him after all. However, one more interruption of fight to be shown. Oh, there's the tag. There's the tag to come. The, the slightly intellectually challenged member of the breed, we might say. I'm judging by the evidence of their breed. Oh, oh a, a devastating move there. Really driving the wind down. Ash stayed low to heighten the impact, to heighten the control, to make sure Alex Castano hadn't moved out of the way. If he'd gone any higher in that flip, Alex may have had a chance to move. As it was, all the breath was driven out of his body. 
Jorge is in the ring now. What is Jorge doing in the ring? I don't believe I saw a tag. Never mind, it seems to be on. Jorge versus Kerr. Castano versus Breed. Isn't this always the way it's been? Isn't this always the way we'd like to see it? Two young teams, two teams of hungry young men fighting for the most prestigious tag team title in British wrestling. Allow me, Ma the Magistral, the Magistral Cradle, only a two count. Excuse me for stuttering over my words, my words, but that came out quick, that came out fast, it came out furious, just like every moment of action in this match. Snap suplex and a splash combination, there was a tag that time. Only a two count again, the Breed don't want to give up. They know this could be their last chance to capture these titles. They don't want to see it slip away. Curve is already working for the whole of the year with no pay. Ash doesn't want to put himself in a similar situation. The soup kitchen isn't a place for two young lads like these. Ash into the ring, getting a few accolades, accolades from the crowd here. Sending, sending Jorge out to the ring unceremoniously. He's got into the barriers. That's man against metal, and metal always wins. Newbreed calling for their finisher, but there's Jorge. Jorge has interrupted the Newbreed as yet unnamed move that they used to such devastation last month. Who's this? Who is this? That's not Ash or Curve. Incredible! As the Castanos might say, incredible! Who is that man? There's a three count! The referee has signaled a three count, but who is that? Who is that man? He may look like a new breed, but look! Curve is on the outside to the left! There's Ash being pushed into the ring by that as yet unidentified man! Here we see on the replay! What an amazing manoeuvre! It's got the three counts! The new breed are champions again! But, but there is this jiggery pokery afoot! Here we go to go! I'll see you after break for a title match! TV. And boy, what a shock we just saw. We saw the new breed with the aid of a new, as yet unidentified member, win the tag team title. But let me tell you this, that action, that drama is going to be topped because we've got Johnny Storm versus Doug the Anakin Williams for the FWA British Heavyweight title. Now this match came about as a result of last week's brutal mugging of Jody Fleisch by Doug Williams. Jody was coming to the ring to announce that his arm was almost fully healed and that he would have been ready to take on Doug this week for the title. However, Doug had different ideas. Scared of Jody in this man's position, he attacked him, re-injuring the elbow, putting Jody's arm in an enormous amount of pain, almost as bad as when he was first injured. That meant Jody could not take his place here this week. But a man came to the same, a man called Johnny Storm. He was the cavalry, Doug Williams was the Indians. Johnny Storm challenged Doug Williams to a match here tonight, and Doug accepted. It's on, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a classic. Sit down, get comfortable, and take in the drama. Johnny getting the crowd fired up, getting them behind him, even at this early stage. Johnny is, is, is such a hero to these people. He saved Jody last week. Jody was in, in, in a, an enormous amount of trouble at the hands of Doug Williams. Johnny made the save. What you may not know at home, ladies and gentlemen, is that in just three days' time, 
Johnny Storm has to defend his All England Championship in Germany against Ahmed Shah. He's a fighting champion, even though the belt isn't on the line tonight. Doug Williams is the only title that's on the line tonight. Even though Johnny's belt isn't on the line, he's stepping in the ring, knowing full well that in three days' time, he's got to defend his own belt. That's the kind of calibre of the man that we're dealing with. Test of strength broken up by Doug Williams. Pushing Johnny Storm into the ropes and an elbow. Off the ropes. Johnny Storm sending Doug through. Johnny Storm taking a big bump into the ropes. Taking a big hit, but look at him. He's up on his feet. He's contemplating his next move. Doug Williams, of course, has been the FWA champion for seven weeks. He has, he has fought back the challenge of Kerry Cabrero. He has fought back the political machinations of Victoria de Montfort. She does not want him as our champion. I do not want him as our champion. You in the FWA want to be represented by that man there, that lowlife. Doug Williams, a hell of a wrestler he may be, but he's a horrible human being. And while he is champion, the FWA will always be under threat. He's a self-confessed anarchist. Oh, oh, excuse me. Beautiful sequence by Johnny Storm. And the drop toe hold into the ropes. Doug Williams' face met turnbuckle pan, and now he's been dumped to the outside. As I was saying, the FWA is under threat and it may be for that reason that Victoria de Montfort has, has hired the services of a fixer, a man known only as Dino Scarlo. Those who know of him whisper his name. He's such a dangerous individual. He knows people, people who know people. Johnny to the outside, bringing Doug down to his level and a face into the mat, a face into the apron. And now it's Doug who takes the turn to lure Johnny into the ring and bring him down to the mat. If you ground a flyer, he's no good. And that's what Doug is trying to do now. What he perhaps doesn't realize, although a man of Doug's intelligence, a man of his intellect, a man of his nous, has no doubt scouted Johnny Storm. But what he perhaps doesn't realize is that Johnny Storm is an excellent map technician as well. Johnny fighting against the head scissors here of Doug, turning it over. Flipping out into a headlock of his own. A grounded side headlock, bringing it up, cranking down on Doug's head. Back suplex by Doug Williams. That's a way, ladies and gentlemen, to get out of a side headlock. Doug Williams knows every hold. He knows a counter to every hold and a counter to that counter. That mare takeover and a knee to the back of the head, grabbing the hair for extra leverage. Doug Williams is a master of his game and he's taking Johnny Storm to school. Scoop slam, followed by a knee to the head. Johnny Storm taken down. Johnny Storm in pain. And Doug Williams is the man who's doing it all. He looks firmly in control of this bout here today. Right hand, another right. Yet a third right. Trying to whip Doug in the right. Oh! Short arm clothesline by Doug Williams. And look at him pointing to that powerful brain. He's got a powerful body, a powerful arsenal of wrestling moves, and a brain to match. Doug grounding Johnny Storm. Of course, Johnny's not going to be the only challenger. There's a certain Alex Shane, the show stealer. He's certainly been peppered throughout our series so far. He'd like to make the FWA his own, and that includes Doug's title. But first, he's got to finish his business with Guy Thunder. Guy Thunder, of course, we saw last week beat Mr. Blonde, but at a huge cost to his own health. He took blow after blow to his eye, the eye swelling shut. Dr. 
doctors have told him this week that he should refrain from action. But let me tell you, the first thing Guy Thunder did after the doctors told him that was go and pick a fight in a bar. It was a justified fight, let me tell you. A man hassling a woman. Guy Thunder's no mug. But let me, it just illustrates the kind of man that Guy Thunder is. And I believe it can't be long before either Guy Thunder or Alex Shane, whichever one comes out on top of that particular feud, goes after Doug Williams. The next few weeks in the FWA are going to be so exciting. Our next few shows will be unlike anything we've shown you before. Such is the intensity of the feuds. Such is, is the heat of the matchups. They're, they're getting to, oh, rolling leg whip. We saw that a couple of weeks ago from Shelby Lynn. She's a student of Doug Williams. She's an acolyte of the anarchist. And that is one of the moves he taught her. He does it so much, so much better than her, with so much more force. Johnny Storm driven into the mat. What an incredible move. Doug getting into referee Steve Linsky there, trying to get through those, those pounds of fat that surround his whole body, even his ears. He's trying to tell Johnny that jo he's trying to tell Steve Linsky that Johnny was cheating. I don't personally think he was, but if Doug believes it, few are going to argue with him within those four walls. Oh, oh, super rewind, Hurricane Rana. Only a two count. Johnny Storm won the All England Championship a few weeks ago from Scotty Rock with that very manoeuvre. But it couldn't get it done here tonight. Doug Williams, too savvy. Johnny, look, Johnny even losing his temper a little, throwing his body around the ring with few, few thoughts for his own safety, for Doug Williams' safety. He's trying it again, but Doug Williams, too clever, catches him and a sit down power bomb. Two and three quarters, perhaps even two and 15 sixteenths. That was close, ladies and gentlemen. That was so very close. Doug Williams almost had his night's work done. He was almost going to the back, his title intact, but no, Johnny Storm kicked out to fight another day. And look at that display of strength. No! Oh, slip out by Johnny Storm. A roll up. Only a two count. And a super kick. Doug Williams is down. Johnny Storm has the man shaken. Two and three quarters yet again. Ladies and gentlemen, this one is back and forth. Back and forth. A two count by Doug Williams. A two count by Johnny Storm. Who can get this done? Who can win the belt? Who will be our champion at the end of tonight's show? Missed forearms. The revolution, DDT! Revolution! Revolution! That's it! That's finished! So many men! Come on! Cover him! One! Two! Oh! Johnny Storm kicked out! I don't want to lose my impartiality here, but Johnny Storm, come on! You can beat him! Another scoop up by Doug. Come on, Johnny. Come on. You can do it. You can beat this man. I'd like to think I'm the most impartial man in British wrestling. I call it straight down the line. But I've had enough of Doug Williams. I've had enough of his title. I've had enough of his head. I've had enough of his bum. And it's his bum that's hurting now as Johnny cascades down onto him with a moonsault. That's it. No! Two and 99 one hundred. It was almost over. Johnny, you've got to do it again. Go up top one more time. Ah! Doug Williams move. Johnny landed on his feet. Chaos theory. One, two, three. Oh no. Doug Williams is still FWA champion. Doug Williams still holds the belt to ransom. I must admit. He's an incredible performer. He's perhaps the best wrestler this country has ever seen. But can anyone take the belt off him? Can Victoria de Monka find a man who can stop Doug Williams? Can Victoria find a man who can stop the threatening phone calls? Will Dino Scarlo, the fixer, 
be that man? Will Dino Scarlo cause trouble for Doug Williams or the rest of the FWA? These are questions that play on my mind. What was Angel doing with Guy Thunder last week? And what does it mean for Scott Parker? Who is the new member of the new breed? Can Alex Shane beat Guy Thunder? All these questions and more will be answered in the future. We've got to go. I'll see you next time. Don't you